Good afternoon once again, everybody. This is uh, Dave Nadler with the National Weather Service here in Peachtree City, Atlanta. I'm here to conduct our second briefing on what is now Hurricane Helene. And we're going to talk about the potential threats and impacts uh, for North and Central Georgia over the next couple of days. <clears throat> okay, so um, again, uh, Helene, as of this morning, uh, National Hurricane Center, um, it's now a hurricane, and it's, it can, it's expected to intensify to a major hurricane, uh, Cat 3 Plus, over the eastern Gulf of Mexico here in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Um, did highlight um, sort of the magnitude of this event. Um, it's a very unique situation with a powerful hurricane kind of being kind of sucked up into a, an upper level system that's currently to our northwest, um, sets the stage for a fairly unprecedented event for rainfall, combination of rainfall and very strong winds across north and central Georgia. So we know a lot of you are already taking this very seriously. We just wanted to reiterate that um, this could be a, a very widespread significant event uh, for our area um, when it's all said and done. Some of the notable changes from yesterday, um, that track of, of Helene is actually um, taken, that updated track is taken more of that left turn. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Um, putting much of the area under what we call would be like a worst case scenario for impacts due to the winds, rainfall, flooding, and even tornadoes in our far southeast counties. The rainfall totals have gone up in some areas nearly double compared to what we were looking at about 24 hours ago. So that's obviously increased the potential for um, uh, flash flooding and river and stream flooding. Um, and we are also watching um, rain, heavy rain storms developing right now. Um, which could set the stage for just enhance the potential for flash flooding going into tomorrow, tomorrow night and Friday as Helene actually um, approaches. So a lot going on. Here's the latest on Helene from the National Hurricane Center. Once again, it is a hurricane now, um, continuing to track to the north northeast over the next 24 hours, becoming a major hurricane. Um, and it will be a major hurricane um, somewhere uh, before landfall or as it's making landfall along the Florida uh, Panhandle, northern Florida coast um, sometime tomorrow evening. The storm, as it continues to move north and take that bend more to the left, more to the northwest um, across uh, western Georgia, um, that's where we obviously will start to see quite a significant impacts with rainfall and flooding even before the system makes landfall. Um, but you can see the bend to the, to the west a little bit as it makes landfall. Um, because of its forward moving speed, it's going to be moving relatively quick, which again, talking yesterday is a good thing um, with respect to the impacts not being long duration or the threats being long duration. But the downside of that is the magnitude of what we could see, the, the wind speeds along with the heavy rain the flooding um, could really hit hard and fast. Um, and that's that's going to be problematic and it wouldn't be surprising to see Helene still uh, as a hurricane, a low end hurricane, as it moves into our far southwest counties, Stewart County, over towards Americus, up near Columbus. Um, it still could be a hurricane, you know, with wind gusts over 70, 75 miles per hour um, as it's tracking across the area Thursday night. So um, definitely something um, to, you know, really take seriously, I already mentioned that, uh, but this is the latest from the Hurricane Center. So uh, watches and warnings, we have um, our entire forecast area is under a tropical storm watch. Well, anything north of like a LaGrange to Thomaston to Sandersville line. South of there, Columbus over toward Macon, down toward um, just west of Dublin, you're now under a tropical storm warning. That's the darker red shaded. And then uh, even farther south, Stewart County over towards Americus, Abbeville, um, you are now under a hurricane warning. Um, and the whole area is under a flood watch, but the flood watch is being uh, superseded by the tropical product. So that this is the latest. Um, we'll probably do another update on this um, later this afternoon around the five, between the five o'clock, six o'clock uh, p.m. window. Um, this is what we've got going on right now. Latest radar and satellite, we've got, um, I mentioned the uh, heavy rain storms developing, um, not associated with Helene. Uh, across Alabama, parts of Northwest Georgia right now, that's in association with an upper level trough that's digging into the area. Um, we've got some very heavy rainfall already falling across parts of West Central and Northwest Georgia. So we're um, to for uh, not only a very heavy rainfall event, um, but the, just increasing the, um, the risk of flash flooding and flooding. So 
uh, satellite, a look at more of like the Gulf of Mexico. You can see where Helene um, is spinning right off and it's going to continue to move to the north, uh, northeast over the next 12 to 24 hours. And then once it gets waters of the eastern Gulf, it will, um, it is forecasted to intensify quite quickly into a major hurricane over the next 24 hours. What's changed? Um, gone up quite a bit from yesterday. Um, this is a total. So this is including um, what we could see this afternoon through this evening, all the way through Friday afternoon, evening. Um, we've got a widespread area <clears throat> of six to eight, eight to 10 inches across the I-85 corridor. And then even um, farther to the east of that, um, some pockets of uh, 10 to as much as 12 or more inches of rain expected over the next um, 48 to 72 hours. That's a lot of rain. Even in that two to three day window, it's a tremendous amount of rainfall. Um, the graphic that you see on the right is um, a probabilistic graphic showing you with the chances based off of an ensemble of models of seeing more than eight inches of rain. And you can see there's a pretty good area from Columbus to LaGrange up towards Griffin, Atlanta, um, Gwinnett County, Gainesville, all the way up into the higher elevations of Northeast Georgia, um, where you're talking 60, 70, 80% chance of seeing more than eight inches of rain out of this event. And I was talking to one of our forecasters, um, the all time, I think the second all time record rainfall for Atlanta is a little over six inches. And that was with Opal back in 95. So we could be looking at some similarities with respect to daily rainfall totals and records. Um, so that's what we have. And again, this will shift a little bit over the next 12 to 24 hours um, as newer data comes in and the amounts of rainfall um, actually occur. Um, but what I want to do next, um, transitioning more to uh, kind of a, an excessive rainfall outlook flash flood threat. I'm going to let our uh, senior service hydrologist, Laura Belanger, talk, talk to this and also to the potential river forecast flooding for a couple of minutes in the next couple of slides. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Um, this is quickly evolving into a, um, you know, potentially life-threatening situation as far as flash flooding with the amount of rainfall amounts that we're getting. You'll notice here on the left is uh, our day one graphic, um, and this is for today. You can see that there is a moderate risk um, across much of the metro Atlanta area, including uh, northeast Georgia and then down towards LaGrange. Um, but a bigger note is what we're expecting for Thursday now, which uh, is shown on the right graphic. Um, basically, our entire area, um, minus a few counties, is remains in that moderate risk Thursday through early Friday morning. Um, but now we've had this high risk area introduced into northeast Georgia that covers uh, several counties up there um, in those higher terrains. This is gonna be a, a big flash flood threat. Um, can't rule out debris flow, landslides, um, quickly onsetting, flash flooding, um, in addition to flooding for, um, in our river systems. So this is continuing to be something that we are monitoring, but with these kind of rainfall amounts, this becomes a big concern. Uh, already we're starting to see uh, the River Forecast Center put forecasts of moderate major flood stage. Um, you know, we don't want to uh, hone on this too much, but, you know, this does, you know, it harkens back to September 2009, uh, the Christmas floods of 2015, where it was widespread significant flooding. And so while the areas of concern may be slightly different, uh, we do want to put those kind of pictures in your mind as far as ways that you can be prepared ahead of time. Um, now, this slide here is now showing you locations that currently have forecasts. Uh, you'll see the orange boxes there are for where main stem river forecast points to go into minor flood stage. Uh, the red box are moderate flood stage and the magenta boxes are for major flood stage. At this point right now, we only see one, but uh, it, it is worth noting that there are several of those red boxes that are just shy of that major flood stage category. Um, at this point, we uh, I don't believe that we're forecasting record conditions at any of these sites, um, but it is also worth noting that these are only the main stem rivers, uh, and so any of our smaller creeks and streams, those forecasts have not been issued yet, and we are going to be making a choice uh, this afternoon to go ahead and get some of these river flood warnings out so that people are aware and can start getting some preparations made. So you'll start seeing those ahead of any flash flood warnings that might be issued um, with Helene as it comes forward. 
Oh, and then one final note is this only includes the 48 hours of rainfall. Um, so it does go all the way through Friday morning, but any area that may have rain uh, beyond Friday morning, uh, you could expect a higher rise. Okay, thanks, Laura. Uh, moving forward, <clears throat> let's talk about the wind probabilities and the wind potential. This is from the National Hurricane Center. Um, I showed this yesterday you can, and, and did mention that the probabilities were certainly going to increase as Helene actually approached and got closer to the area. Um, so right now, just again, this is going to get higher, but just to give you an idea, like Atlanta, 60% um, chance of seeing at least 39 mile per hour wind gusts. And I'm going to show a graphic here in a second that will add some value, I think, to this. Making Columbus, Albany, um, not only are we expecting a pretty good chance, a really high chance of seeing tropical storm force winds, but a lot of our, our areas or are, towns are expected now they're getting into a probability of seeing more than 58 mile per hour wind gusts so um, this is a high-end tropical storm almost low-end hurricane force winds now that we're getting into so winds in addition to us just talking about the the rainfall flood potential um, the duration and the magnitude of the wind speeds is really going to add an extra layer of risk and threat um, and impact um, across just about the entire area as we head into tomorrow night and Friday with uh, Helene approaching. So it's really hard to um, pinpoint um, values with wind when you have um, a tropical system moving right across your area. So what we went ahead and did is manually created this graphic to give you an idea that just about for our entire area, you are under, the, under, at, under risk of seeing at least 40 to 60 mile per hour wind gust. Um, this would be late tomorrow, tomorrow night and into Friday morning. Um, anywhere in orange is where we think the best area or the best chance of seeing a 60 plus mile per hour wind gust at times, especially as Helene, the center of Helene approaches the outer rain bands closer to the center are really going to push that wind speed up. Um, y'all, I'm sure y'all know severe thunderstorm warning thresholds for wind is 60. So think of, uh, like having a severe thunderstorm warning out for multiple hours with some of these winds. It's not going to be a continuous 60 plus mile per hour wind but it's definitely gonna be up and down where it may come down 30 to 40, but then we get those heavier bands come in, it might pop back up over 60 or even more. So um, it just again, I can't stress this enough. If you fall just outside of this orange area, this is just a guess of where we think the strongest wind potential could be, but anywhere across our 96 county forecast area is going to be at risk of seeing tropical storm force winds at least, potentially up to low end hurricane force winds at times um, as Helene moves across the area late uh, Thursday night into Friday. Um, let me go back real fast. I, I do want to mention the impacts. Obviously, it goes without saying that because of the amount of rainfall and the uh, magnitude of these winds, the risk for getting, you know, seeing widespread down trees and power lines is very high. Um, this could certainly lead to widespread and extended power outages across the area. So um, I just wanted to really stress that. Um, um, I wish that we had better news about this, but that's kind of what's sort of coming together and what we've seen in the past with these kinds of events. <clears throat> now let's go into the severe threat for today. Um, we already had an, a severe thunderstorm warning issued earlier. Um, the, uh, there's enough energy in the atmosphere and, and low, level ener low level wind energy to support a few uh, strong to severe storms. Um, Tornado threat's pretty low. It'd be more of a wind damage um, hail threat at this point, but in addition to um, locally heavy rainfall and frequent lightning. So that's uh, through tonight, what we're expecting. Um, tomorrow, as Helene approaches, uh, moves inland on the east side of the low um, in those outer rain bands, that's where the highest risk for tornadoes is going to exist. And you can see that <clears throat> it's nudging up into our far southeast counties, um, the slight risk. Um, approaching Dublin and Sandersville. Um, this could shift a little bit more to the north and west, um, just depending on how strong um, the uh, Helene is as it moves across. Um, but the fact that it's moving through um, overnight into the early morning hours on Friday um, does minimize the, the, uh, the energy in the atmosphere just a little bit, um, but there's definitely gonna be enough wind shear um, to create some rotation with them and some of these heavier showers and storms that might be uh, embedded within the outer rain bands uh, Thursday night into Friday. All right, uh, let me summarize. That was a lot, um, but I hope that the the main messages got across to everybody. Helene is now a hurricane. It is continuing. It is expected to continue to intensify to a major hurricane over the next 12 to 24 hours. 
It will be a major hurricane as it makes landfall along the Florida Panhandle sometime uh, Thursday evening. <clears throat> Again, because of the track and the movement of Helene, um, this is expected to be a, a fairly unprecedented event for North and Central Georgia. Very uh, serious, significant um, impacts from the heavy rain flooding and the wind. Um, so please, please take this very seriously. We hope that everybody's doing what they have to do right now to, to plan um, for what we're expecting over the next couple of days. Um, the notable changes from yesterday, um, that track turning a little bit more to the left puts us in sort of a worst case scenario with impacts, higher rainfall totals compared to what we saw yesterday. And then of course the heavy rain um, enhancing the flood potential that we see later today into tonight uh, can be very problematic, especially along the I-85 corridor, including the Atlanta metro area. So at this time, we're not, we don't have any additional uh, webinars scheduled. Um, what we will continue to do is evaluate whether or not we go live like in Slack or do, we're certainly gonna send email updates out, um, keep everybody up to date on things. But um, you know, this is how you can reach out to us. If we do plan another webinar um, through GoToMeeting here, we'll certainly let you know. Um, but otherwise, um, that is it for the live webinars at this point, because we're going to start getting into more of a, a weather threat uh, warning mode situation here in the next uh, 12 hours or so.